we can finally end this Groundhog Day spectacle, stop endlessly relitigating a two and a half year old election result and move forward for the American people. And the special counsel's finding is clear. Case closed. Case closed. Mm -mm, you heard him there. Mitch McConnell says case closed. It's time to move on. But one of his own Republican colleagues, the chairman of the Senate Intel Committee, Richard Burr, says not so fast. His committee's subpoena of Donald Trump Jr. stands out because it comes from a Republican-led Senate panel. But it is just one of at least half a dozen subpoenas issued to this administration from four different committees. The White House has agreed to comply with none of them. Eli Stokels is the White House reporter for the LA Times. Jeff Rosen, president and CEO of the National Constitution Center and a professor at George Washington University School of Law. Eli, here's the issue. The White House has painted all of these subpoenas as part of the Democratic witch hunt uh, and the, 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 it's all a grand hoax. But in this case, this is a Senate committee led by a Republican and even the House Intel Committee subpoena for the Mueller report, that was signed off by Adam Schiff, yes, Democrat, and Republican Devin Nunes. Do these new facts change the White House's narrative or defense? They don't change the plan, which is to continue to stonewall and say no to all of these requests and just say, look, Mueller couldn't uh, find anything. He took two years. This is over with. Move on. That's going to be their plan. Uh, the president's really eager to end these investigations, uh, to snuff them out, so to speak. And I think that their uh, actions doing so are really just adding more fuel uh, to the investigations. You heard Speaker Pelosi talking about he's almost goading us into continuing these investigations and pushing us towards impeachment. I think that's maybe the net effect of some of this uh, when they're refusing subpoenas uh, and, and so forth. Uh, but, you know, clearly on the Republican side, there's a lot of frustration because you hear Mitch McConnell say case closed uh, and Senator Burr is not on the same script. And yes, this subpoena was issued weeks before McConnell took to the floor. This was in the works for a while. We're just hearing about it now. Uh, but there is an expectation uh, at the White House and from other Republicans expressing frustration uh, that politics uh, is, should be thicker than everything else should be thicker than your oath to uphold the Constitution and pre preserve the separation of powers. That tells you a lot about the moment that we're in, the expressions of frustration from people around Don Jr. Uh, and inside the White House privately. They're frustrated uh, at the fact that this is coming from a committee led by a Republican. That tells you a lot. You think Richard Burr got any phone calls or text messages last night? Jeff, up until now, the president continues to use executive privilege to keep the Mueller report uh, out of others' hands. But in this case, this is Donald Trump Jr. He can't protect Donald Trump Jr. He's not an elected official. He doesn't work inside the White House. He's not a lawyer, and he's not the sitting president. That's absolutely right. Executive privilege only covers executive deliberations and only about matters involving foreign policy or sensitive executive uh, functions. It doesn't even cover grand jury secrecy, which is what most of the redactions in the Mueller report involve. It certainly doesn't cover any of the president's business dealings before he became president. And therefore, executive privilege can't prevent Donald Trump from testifying. More broadly, Congress is thinking of bundling all of the contempt citations against the officials who are refusing to testify, Donald Trump, Trump Jr., William Barr, Don McGahn, sending all of those to a district court in one package and trying to get a contempt finding that could later become the basis of a possible impeachment finding. So Ari is absolutely right that uh, self-impeachment, as the speaker said, uh, is referring to an article of impeachment against President Nixon for defying congressional subpoenas. And whether or not these uh, subpoenas are enforced in court, they may end up in an impeachment procedure. Proceeding itself. Eli, the buzz from Donald Trump's junior camp is that this is all a PR stunt and uh, Richard Burr isn't a real Republican, though we should remind our audience he's been a Republican a whole heck of a lot longer than the president himself has. What's the rationale? I mean, a PR stunt for whom? Right, right. The, the, I mean, and, and the White House believes that on the politics of this, that the American public doesn't want impeachment. They're ready to move on. So they they're saying this is a PR stunt done by politics, even though they believe that the politics on this are kind of a wash uh, and that both sides are sort of firmly entrenched. And obviously, if there's nothing to hide, you just go do the interview. You're not 
claiming executive privilege. You just put everything out there. And that is the opposite uh, of what this White House is doing right now. Uh, Jeff. Jerry Nadler has said this is a constitutional crisis. Yesterday, I sat down with Chris Christie and former Attorney General Jeff Sessions. They said, no, not yet. This is just something that has to work its way through the court system. What's your take? I put a pretty high bar for constitutional crisis. The founding, the Civil War were definitely constitutional crisis. When there's blood in the streets, when there's violence, when the branches can't agree, that's a constitutional crisis. Right now, we're seeing serious constitutional conflict between the branches that could lead, as in the Watergate era or during Andrew Johnson uh, after the Civil War, uh, to possible contempt citations or impeachment. But for crisis, I would say you'd be have to sending out the troops. So we're not there yet, but there's more serious serious conflict between the branches, certainly, than we've seen perhaps even since the Nixon era. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.